So why do we need the hypothesis testing? Well, the reason is uh, one reason is that so in statistics, so sometimes we cannot measure the entire population. Okay, so for example, if you want to do a survey about the energy cost um, of other um, household in the United States, so probably it's, it's very hard to do that. Uh, so we can only measure samples and based on the on the data of the samples and we can infer the data about the population. So for example, if we just select 1% of, of the household in United States, that is already still a huge work. And you can see okay, what is energy, average energy cost of those samples. And next you may have an idea that, okay, so what is the average cost of all the household in the United States? And when we do it, when we do the samplings, uh, we we might have errors. So, so for example, if you just surveyed the household in the Virginia, and also you don't do the survey for the other states, and if I using Virginia as samples to representing to represent the entire United States, then you may have errors. So, because you know the unique weather of the Virginia, so the uh, it may not represent. The energy cost may be different from the people in Georgia. Um, so in so so we may have sampling errors. So the hypothesis testing will help us to quantify that to what extent that the samples are different from the populations. Um, so normally we will have a non hypothesis and we will have an alternative hypothesis. So non-hypothesis is always going to represent the default position. So for example, here we have a sample of the energy cost property in, uh, in Virginia. And also we can see that average is this one. And so our non-hypothesis is that we are going to guess, OK, so population mean will also be uh, $260 per year, probably. And in that case, the alternative hypothesis is that, OK, so the population mean does not equal to that one. OK. So in this case, we can, we are, uh, for example, if from other data, from other research, we know that the population average is this. OK, and also the, the distribution of our sample, so the PDF of our sample is like this. So now we know that, OK, so they are different okay so they are different but the question is that so to what extent to what extent they are different so are those difference just because of the sample errors are those difference because that uh, Virginia is 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 really different from other states in United States okay so to what extent those are different uh, so here we, we will use the significant level and also we can calculate the p-values. Uh, so significant level is the probability that we can reject the non-hypothesis or the likelihood that we can make a type 1 error. Okay, um, so just in keeping in mind that significant level is a level that somehow that we predefined Okay, so this is a predefined. So uh, some people prefer 0 0.05, so the magic 0 0.05, and some people prefer 0 0.001. Okay, so that is a significant level. So if you look at the PDF here, so the significant level is those uh, red areas. So those red areas. So because this is the two tailed, so the left side is representing. Uh, point zero two five and also right side is point uh, point zero two five so if we plus combine those two together and we will have point zero five okay so that is a significant level and for example this is a PDF of the Virginia energy cost and still we have the mean value of this one and now we see okay so from other data resource we we know that okay the the true population, the mean of the population is this value. And that fell in this 
significant level. Okay, so that fell in this significant level. So in that case, we can say, okay, so the uh, based on our samples, okay, so we know that the probability of seeing this value is a very, very low. Is very, very low. So it's is is above this value is very, very low. Okay, so that that fell falls into our significant level. So in that case we can see we can see that okay so this one is statistically is different from the population and that difference is statistically significant. Okay so that is a significant level. And the p-value just calculate that to what extent assuming that uh, this does belong to our uh, samples to what extent that at as extreme as we see that observe that value in our um, uh, samples so that is a p-value so in this case we can say okay so if we do want to see that value in our sample so the average cost of all the united states in our sample the cost in virginia so that is a p-value, okay, the p-value. And the p-value is very, very small. And in this case, this p-value is smaller than our predefined significant level. So if the p-value is less than the significant level, and we can reject the non-hypothesis. So uh, in this case, we can see that, we all see that this one is significantly different from this one. So that means um, this one does not belong to the population of our sample, or our sample and our, does not belong to the population of this value. Okay, so they belong to different population, or their difference is uh, significant, statistically significant. Another way of thinking about the difference is called uh, confidence intervals. So confidence interval is uh, is uh, is the opposite way that we are considered calculating uh, how the difference uh, they are. So so the idea is that uh, so for example here we have our sample value of Virginia, and so if we are going to um, take samples from the entire United States and so we do that multiple times we see the every cost and next we have this PDF so from the entire population or from the population of the United States of the energy cost and we see okay so uh, we want uh, establish this one so 95% of confident levels for the, for the sample mean of this one and so now we have this PDF. Uh, so if this value 260 does not fall into this confident intervals, and so which in this case, if the, the confident interval of 90% around this mean value will be in this range. So if we don't, uh, does not include our uh, 260, and we can reject the non-hypothesis. Or we can see that this one is different, significantly different from this population. Okay, uh, so to sum up, so there are two ways we can calculate the significant difference. The first one is that we look at the p-values. So the p-value, if that is less than the significant level, and we can reject the non-hypothesis. The second way is that if the confident intervals does not contain the non-hypothesis, and we can reject the non-hypothesis. So the confident level normally equals one minus a significant level. So as so that is how you define significant level. Um, and there are two ways. So you can either calculate the p-levels, p-values, or you can uh, calculate the interval uh, confident intervals. Okay, so both will help you decide that whether or not we can reject the non-hypothesis. And so we have uh, 
we know that we talk about p values a lot, and so if especially that when we when you want to publish some scientific papers, and also um, if you want prove that your uh, your result is significant, and you always want to have a very small p values. So for example, if you want to say okay, the vaccine are are effective the vaccine of the COVID-19 are effective. So you compare the people that got those vaccines against the people without vaccines. And you can see, okay, so uh, the effective, the difference is significantly uh, different. And you want a very small p-values. So however, we should be careful about p-values because um, you can actually manipulate the p-values or what they call it P hiking. Okay, so that means that if you really want to find out a significant result, you can massage your data and you really you can find out your significant result. Okay, so you can either test enough hypotheses so you can just try to adjust your hypothesis and also do it multiple times and Sometimes you can always find out some the hypothesis. One of them will be significant. Or if you remove the right outliers, okay. So if you remove the right outliers, and you can probably get the p value that is below than 0 0.05. So p hacking is definitely not recommended. It, it's not it's not right. So it um, violates the 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 integrity of your research. So um, what we should do is that if you want to do the good science, okay, and you should determine your hypothesis before you looking at your data. You should determine your hypothesis before you determine your data. And when you clean your data, we know that we should clean your data, you should not consider the hypothesis, okay? So when you clean your data, you should be, you should not clean, you should not uh, consider your hypothesis. Okay, so you should not uh, remove those outliers that can help you to find out the significant hypothesis. And also keep in mind that p-values are not a substitute for common sense. Okay, so if we find out something that uh, are significant, however that violates the common sense, like remember that the uh, one of our previous example that we see the high ice cream and also the shocking shock attack, they are significantly uh, correlated, but that violates the common sense. Then you should not trust your hypothesis. 